So this is a quick summary of the idea of constructive alignment in planning teaching. So I just want to talk through what constructive alignment is and how we use it as teachers. Um, John Biggs defined it as uh, the designing of instruction so that the learning intention is supported by the materials and the action of teaching and its subsequent assessment and feedback. What I think this allows teachers to do is what Dylan William recommends is to regulate the learning rather than the activity. And it sounds easy, right? However, there are some very common difficulties in doing this well. The first one is engaging in activity over the content or the too frequent use of activities that require trial and error or means end thinking by the student or by the teacher providing feedback that is means end rather than about the content itself. So I just want to exemplify what those three things might look like. Uh, this one I have actually seen uh, in a real classroom. Uh, the students were learning about volcanoes and they had built a paper mache volcano uh, and put a yogurt pot in the top and filled it with bicarbonate and vinegar and some food colouring um, and made the volcano erupt. However, that doesn't necessarily get to the essence of what volcanoes are really made from. It doesn't get them to think about the process of a volcanic eruption um, and therefore has distracted them from the content that the teacher had wanted them to learn about. I know this is quite an extreme example, but I think it exemplifies that magpie in teachers that we get a little bit distracted by the shiny new thing or strategy we've seen in somebody else's classroom that doesn't necessarily fit with the purpose of learning a bit of content. This one's actually happened in my own classroom. Um, and this one induced students to use a little bit of means end thinking. Um, I've done a little bit of assessment. The students were not very good at using um, data to interpret whether a, a material would be solid, liquid or gas. And I'd found a boat resource that had this uh, task upon it um, and I got a little bit suspicious uh, during the activity and I started asking a, a few students a few questions. So I'd seen a student had written down oxygen as a gas at room temperature of course and I asked them why hoping amongst hope that they would start referring to the data. Um, however of course the student said well there's three spaces available sir. Um, so they had just basically guessed it was going to be a gas because there was three spaces to write in rather than use the data. Similar kind of idea here. Um, this question for you all. Uh, who won stage 11 in the 1953 Tour de France? Was it John Fashanu? Uh, was it uh, Jean Rubik? Uh, C, was it Skeletor or was it Noel Edmonds? Um, and we can all work that out. You know, if we know a little bit about John Fashanu and Skeletor and Noel Edmonds, we don't need to know anything about Jean Rubik. So we can answer that question through inference or through deduction. Very easily uh, corrected, but when lessons are flowing, sometimes we will not necessarily be thinking in that kind of detail and we'll make it you know, we'll get an answer that a student doesn't necessarily understand because they've been able to work it out at the spur of the moment. Uh, a similar kind of example, but this is from a teacher's feedback perspective. Um, this is where we actually give feedback, which is means end. Um, so one of the things uh, as a science teacher I do is teach uh, students the reactions of a metal with water. And you probably remember popping a bit of, or your teacher putting a little bit of potassium on some water, it bursting into a lilac flame and maybe it's a few sparks and it was all very, very exciting. One of the things your teachers want to teach through that is this equation, that a metal reacts with water to produce a, a metal hydroxide and a gas called hydrogen. Now, it's not surprising that students get a bit lost in this because it's exciting. There's lots of in, there's lots of information going on at the same time. It's more complicated than it first appears. 
but they have come across this gas hydrogen before. And it's quite easy to, to miss that the, the gas is being given off because it's actually being burned in that flame. But I would quite often ask the question, what gas is being given off? And quite often the students would not know. And the question I used to go to was, well, this gas that is released goes pop. And I would get a chorus of students saying, oh, well, it's hydrogen, hydrogen, it must be hydrogen. So I'm getting the right answer, so it looks like the lesson can proceed, but what I haven't had the students do is that learn that hydrogen is produced when it's reacted with the metal with the water. Um, they're just linked, going pop, with hydrogen. So that's me, as a teacher, giving them a little way of inferring the right answer. Nothing's been joined together for them, uh, and it's not about that content. Basically, it's turned into a game of what answer was in my head as a teacher. So there's a few things uh, we can do uh, to improve our practice with constructive alignment. And these could either be planning questions or reflection. Um, so we can look at tasks and ask, what is it actually for? Does it allow the students to think about the content? To look at the task, does it serve any other educational purposes, which might be totally valid? Um, but there might be a conflict between the activity and the content. It might prioritise the wrong thing. So does the task prioritise the content in the way you want as a teacher? Uh, does it present any opportunities for students to do any means ed thinking? Can they infer or deduce an answer? Um, if it's a, an assessment task, is it su sufficiently well constructively linked to avoid those means ed thinking? Do they have to know things to get the answer right? Um, we might need to think about the forms of feedback we gave the students about the content um, or the processes of working uh, answers out based on their current understanding and whether we can get them to think about that content in a deeper and more meaningful way. And the final suggestion I would have there is thinking about how we actually go about structuring that. Do we need to go back to the beginning, like I would with the metal and water example, where I'd have to go back and go back to the equation again and reteach them and re-emphasize that again before building back up and reminding them possibly that they've come across that gas before. So I'm just going to leave the little summary there of what constructive alignment allows us to do as teachers is to regulate the learning rather than the activity.